Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. It's Wednesday, May 16th. I am Sheka Sali. Today, we'll talk about press freedom in Africa. The 2012 Freedom of the Press report, released on the 3rd of May, says that out of 197 countries assessed during 2011, a total of 66 countries were rated free. 72 were rated partly free, and 56 countries were rated not free at all. My colleague, Paul Ndiho, has more on the story. The state of press freedoms in Africa continued to be a hot topic in 2011. More than 13 African countries introduced new legislation last year that restricted press freedoms and allowed regimes to control domestic media. The report released by Freedom House, a media watchdog group based in Washington, says that 10% of countries in sub-Saharan Africa were rated free, 47% rated partly free, and 43% not free at all. The Horn of Africa was cited for the worst in attacks against the press on the continent, with Eritrea jailing 28 journalists, the most in Africa. Ethiopia ranked among the top 10 oppressors of internet journalists, and some are currently on trial on terrorism charges. And in Somalia, several journalists have been assassinated. In Angola, the government introduced a bill that would criminalize the use of social media, electronic dissemination of recordings, pictures, and video of any individual without the subject's consent. In Cameroon, the government detains journalists for investigating official misconduct, demonizes social media users, and criminalizes certain online speech. In Ivory Coast, journalists were attacked in the presidential power struggle. Watara prayed reconciliation, but his government retaliated against pro Bagbo media. And in Rwanda, two independent journalists received lengthy prison sentences. Journalists working for independent media continue to free the country. In South Africa, and press rhetoric by the National African Congress, assaults on journalists, and the ruling party pushed through a secrecy bill. In Uganda, nationwide protests over work-to-work -work demonstrations led to anti-press attacks and censorship. Two journalists were shot and dozens assaulted. And finally, in Zimbabwe, official media harassment is down slightly, but restrictive laws and regulations against journalists remain. Government raised accreditation fees but moved slowly on issuing private broadcast licenses. Paul Ndiho. VON News. Thanks, Paul, for that report. 